Okay, welcome. Welcome veteran community, our special guests, our administrators, staff, and students. To our Edison inventors, our Edison, uh, how do I say this right, Edisonians, and our Edison Owls. Welcome home, alumni. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Dr. Daryl Johnson. I am a proud graduate of Edison High School. I am also an Air Force veteran during the Vietnam era. I proudly stand before you as your event coordinator and master of ceremony. How many of you, and I'm looking at our guests, how many of you attended the, the, the dedication ceremony for the Pennsylvania Historical Market at 8th and Lehigh in November? Can you raise your hand? Well, I'm going to tell you that I am still on an emotional high from that event. I think that was uh, the most fabulous event that, that I've ever had the pleasure of being part of. Now, I'm letting you know that that event culminated all of the efforts that this school has been doing for many, many years, even back when I was a student here. If you look out at the uh, main uh, atrium, you'll see a memorial um, on the bronze plaque. That was done by teachers who are no longer here back in 1989. So this is something that started back in the 60s and it continues today, and I'm glad to be part of it. However, today's event, like the event that was in November, is a historical day as well. So I'm not gonna give out any secrets. However, just hold on to your hats. It's gonna be a very good event. And plus, we have a few surprises for you. Okay, without further delay, let's get started. Latin American Post 840 of the American Legion. Please post your colors. At this time, 
I'd like to bring to the podium a fellow Legionnaire, close friend to Edison High School, who will narrate the, the POW MIA missing chair ceremony. So I would like to have Mr. Joe Wis Wisichansky and Cadet Second Lieutenant Nate Landry. Cadet, you may now post. I will now narrate the symbolic representation of this special ceremony. The table set upon this stage is a place of honor. It is set for one. This table is our way of symbolizing the fact that members of our nation's armed forces are missing from our midst. Those who have served and those currently serving the uniformed services of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and internment. They are commonly called POWs, prisoners of war, or MIAs, those missing in action. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with us this day, and so we remember them. The table is set for one, is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. Remember, the tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. Remember, the single red rose displayed in the vase reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep the faith awaiting their return. Remember, the yellow ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is reminiscent of the red ribbon worn upon the lapel and breasts of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing. Remember, the candle, the candle is lit, symbolizing the upward reach of their unconquerable spirit. Remember, The Bible represents the strength gained through the faith in our country, founded as one nation under God, to sustain those lost from our midst. Remember, a slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember, there is salt upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Remember, the glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us today. Remember, the American flag reminds us that many may never return and have paid the supreme sacrifice to ensure our freedom. The flag reminds us all who have not returned. Remember, the chair, the chair is empty. They are not here. Remember. Remember all of you who served with them and called them comrades, who depended upon their might and aid and relied upon them, for surely they have not forsaken you. Remember. Remember until the day they come home. Remember.
At this time, I would like to bring up to the stage, not just our principal, but a very close friend. We started here at Edison High School together, and from the time I met her, she says, I'm gonna be principal one day. And I told her, I'm gonna be a doctor one day. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'd like to bring up Mr. Wilder Ortiz, our fine and proud principal at Edison High School. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. It's my right hand right there. Good morning, esteemed guests, colleagues, and veterans. On this Memorial Day, we not only commemorate the fallen, but also the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge our very own veterans of Edison High School. When I call your name, please stand. Mr. Tyrone Garcia, Master Sergeant, Air Force. Mr. William Humphrey, Airman, First Class, Air Force. Dr. Daryl Johnson, Technical Sergeant, Air Force. Mr. David Morrison, Technical Sergeant, Air Force. And Mr. Juan Tennyson, Staff Sergeant, Air Force. You can have a seat. Today we celebrate and commemorate with humble homage the memory of absent comrades, all of whom symbolize and give true meaning to the words valor, sacrifice, loyalty, and perseverance. Today, we share a common sorrow, but also give thanks to those who gave their last breath to a cause much greater than themselves. President John F. Kennedy said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. Today, we remember and honor the American soldiers, ordinary men and women, who died while in military service. Soldiers are selfless creatures. They fight as a team and as a family, and they look out for each other with the utmost tenacity, often like we do at Edison High School. Today we spend reflecting on men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Today we thank them and give gratitude. Memorial Day marks the beginning of summer a season that is filled with warmth and life. What could be a more fitting tribute to our men and women who died in service? Today we also continue to acknowledge the honorable lives of the Edison 64. 64 young men who gave their lives in the Vietnam War. Our loss was the greatest loss of students from any single high school in the nation. I would like to conclude by dedicating a most befitting poem to our fallen, Invictus, the Unconquerable, William Ernest Henley. Out of the black night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. My head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Our fallen brethren remain unconquerable and remembered always. Thank you. To bring up one of our cadets, Senior Master Sergeant Savannah Zayas. I love that name, Savannah. That's my mother's name. That's a very beautiful name. She
she's going to introduce our very special guest. And we are honored to have him here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Senior Cadet Master Sergeant Savannah Zales, and it is my honor to introduce our warm welcoming guest speaker, Mr. Ralph Galati. Ralph Galati was born and raised in Philadelphia, PA. He is a graduate of St. James High School, Chester, PA, class of 1966. And he's received his Bachelor's of Science degree in St. Joseph's University, Philadelphia, PA, in 1970, and was commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. As a member of Air Force ROTC, he was a distinguished military graduate, president of Arnold Air Society, and recipient of St. Joseph's University Dance Award. Ralph attended United States Air Force flight training in 1970 and received his wings in 1971. He was a weapon system officer in the F-4 Phantom aircraft and assigned the bomb the U-Bahn Royal Thai Air Force Base in Thailand in the fall of 1971. Ralph qualified as a laser bomb, guided bomb led and was soon elevated to the role of forward air controller. On February 16, 1972, he and his pilot were shot down over North Vietnam and were immediately captured and taken to Hanoi. He spent the next 14 months as a prisoner of war. Ralph was repatriated on March 28, 1973. Ralph's military award includes the Silver Star, the Bronze Star with Valor One Oak Leaf Cluster, the Air Medal with Four Oak Leaf Cluster, the Air Force Commendation Medal with Two Oak Leaf Cluster, the Purple Heart with One Oak Leaf Cluster. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ralph Galati. Thank you. Thank you, Cadet Zayas. And thanks for allowing me to be involved in your program. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Principal Ortiz, Dr. Johnson, and Master Sergeant Garcia for your kind invitation. And thank everybody in the Edison family for not forgetting our heroes. I know there's a lot of fellow veterans here today, especially a lot of Vietnam veterans. Can I ask you to stand for a second if you are a veteran? Thank you. Welcome home. For our young students here today, let me remind you for a minute of the circumstances and what it was like for veterans that lived during the Vietnam era, especially those from Edison. There was a lot of anti-war sentiment, a lot of protests. There was a lot of disappointment with the government over the way it was handling the war. And there was anger with the military because it was associated with the government. But our troops still took the call. Some were drafted and many just enlisted on their own because they wanted to serve their country, even in a faraway land that nobody had ever heard of. But when our troops came home, either on leave or after their tour of duty, they could not wear their uniforms in public. They were not ashamed, it just was not safe for them to do so. So this young soldier left the military, they were not welcome to join the various veterans organizations because they were felt a little bit too contagious. And when this young veteran who had just proudly served his country tried to find a job, he or she had to often conceal their military service. How do you think it must have felt to fight in battle, watch your brothers die in combat, serve your country, and try to return home with dignity, and yet not be honored for your service? Fortunately, times have changed and we now have a renewed respect for our service members, and rightfully so. You as citizens may disagree with our government, you may not support a particular conflict, but at least we respect our soldiers and our seamen, airmen and marines that have honorably served our country. 
the Edison High School contribution to our Vietnam War was significant, and we're honoring that today. Not just because of the soldiers we honor, but for remembering this fact after so many decades. After I was released from the North Vietnam prison, known as the Hanoi Hilton, I was welcomed home in April of 73 by our citizens. There were about 600 of us who came home in that spring. It was quite a homecoming, and yet it was really uncomfortable and distorted. For some reason, it was okay to be a returning POW, but it was not okay to be an average soldier. There were a couple million that served, 58,000 that died, several hundred thousand injured, and yet, where was the welcome home for them? For many years later, the Vietnam Memorial was finally built. The POW MIA flag that you see here today was flown with pride and distinction, and it still flies today. And the soldiers felt that maybe finally they were welcome home. It's not until you've lost all of your freedoms, and, and fortunately, you folks here today have not had that situation. But when you're in a small, dark cell in a faraway land, not knowing if you're gonna live or die, the only thing you have are your memories and your strength built on your service and the remembrance of the flag. So when I hear the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem or I see the flag colors being displayed, it brings back a memory more about what our country stands for, what our freedoms stand for. It's a different feeling for me when you know you have lost everything except for your memories of being home. So the flag stands for a lot more than just the representation. It's what we fight for and what the Edison 64 died for. There's one story I want to tell you, and that's uh, Senator John McCain was at the Hanoi Hilt with me, and I got to meet him a little bit in the fall of 1972. But he tells a story about one of his roommates, a young soldier named Mike Christian. And Mike took it upon himself to get a couple of bamboo sticks and shredded some of his uh, clothing, and he stitched an American flag inside of his prison guard. And the reason he did it was, it was important for them to see the flag and what it represented. So every morning he would take his shirt off and turn it inside out, and the couple of guys in his cell block would salute the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance because it was important to them to remember what they were fighting for. Uh, just like it was important for you to remember the Edison 64 and what they stood for. Anyway, the North Vietnamese guards found out about this when they did a raid in the cell block. They found the flag and they took Mike Christian out and beat him up. And after 24 hours, they returned him to the cell block and Senator McCain and others had to tend to, their, tend to his wounds uh, to ensure that he survived. 24 hours later, they find Mike Christian huddled in the corner of his cell with two bamboo sticks starting to stitch another flag. Now you might say it's a little bit crazy, but the, the significant thing is, even in a POW camp where all your freedoms are gone, it's important to remember from where you came from and how important it is to have that bond of survivability. So when you see some of us old guys at parades, and some of the guys with beards and ponytails with their Harleys displaying their military patches. Thank them for their service. When you go to a parade or civic event and maybe you see warriors watch riders or rolling thunder and a hero's welcome, thank them for their service. When you go home tonight, maybe you have a parent or a brother or sister, an aunt, an uncle, or a grandparent who served in another conflict who served bravely and honorably. Thank them for their service. It's great to be remembered and appreciated. Please remember our service members served bravely and wanting nothing more than return home with honor and dignity. For those who did not return home, especially the Edison 64, we honor them today. They gave their lives in service to our country. For there is no greater love than to give one's life for their friend. Edison High School should be rightfully proud of their heritage. 
for we are the land of the free because of the brave. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Galan. This is the first time we ever had someone here. We had some distinguished and honorable guests um, before us. This is the first time we had someone who was a prisoner of war and to hear his story and from his perspective, perspectives is heartwarming and uplifting. I have something for you, um, Mr. Galante. I will have to give it to you in a little bit, um, it has to be signed, but I'm gonna read the certificate. It says, on behalf of Edison Ferreira High School and all here and present, we would like to extend our deepest appreciation for your service to the nation and for taking the time to support us in making this event a memorable one. It is through your unyielding efforts and support of veterans like yourself and and the many veteran organizations throughout the country that we still remember our fallen and we pay them the proper respect and tribute they deserve. So thank you so much and can we give them another round of applause. Okay, at this point here, at this time here, I don't have to tell these gentlemen what branch service they are. You will see in a few minutes. So is Commander, yes, Cadet Major Remy Afante. Come on up, please. Good morning, veterans. My name is Cadet Major Infante. Please stand when you guys hear your service song. Test it, test it. Good morning, veterans. Good morning, veterans. Good morning, veterans. Good morning. Okay, Please stand when you hear your service song. United States Air Force. United States Marine. United States Home Guard.
States Army. Councilwoman Maria Keone Sanchez office, Mr. Rafael Alvarez. We'd also like to bring to the stage all of 840, Latin American, 840 of the American Legion. And we'd like to have Ms. Ortiz join us, please. I told you this was gonna be an historical day, and I need these people up here so you can witness this. And I want our students to pay very close attention to this, please. My name is uh, Rafael Alvarez. I am the representative from the Office of Councilwoman Maria Quinones Sanchez. And um, today we're going to present something a little special. Um, you'll see this from now until, you know, forever. This is going to be uh, very important. And that is that we're renaming Luzerne Street right in front of Edison High School, Edison 64 Memorial Street. So, <laughs> So as you walk from Fifth Street uh, or from Whittaker Avenue, this street will now be called Edison Memorial 64th Street. Um, so, uh, I, I want to thank the veterans um, because they're they're called to do service, and um, as a representative of someone who is a public servant uh, who recognizes that. Um, it gives us great honor to uh, do this kind of legislation to ensure that there is a memorial that our young people can now look at. Um, but as I was looking at the video, and it said these numbers, right, the video talking about the wars that this country has been in and the millions of people who have given their life in service, I also wanted to recognize the fact that young people in our neighborhoods, on our blocks, we've lost a lot of people. Um, and it's not necessarily in, in, uh, in battle, but in the sense of this violence. And this is an opportunity for you to memorialize them as well. And that's our families, our brothers, our sisters. Um, and it's just a lot of violence that's happening. And we have to take the time to honor those people as well. So I think Memorial Day should be a day to say, you know, say something important. So I, I do want to read the proclamation. Um, it's a little bit uh, legal and wordy, but I will uh, try to make it as smooth as possible. So this is a resolution from the City Council of Philadelphia, also naming Luzerne Street between Whitaker Avenue and North 5th Street as Edison 64 Memorial Street. Memorializing the ultimate sacrifice made by 64 Edison High School alumni who gave their lives during the Vietnam War. Whereas the American Legion, Latin American Post, collaborates with Edison High School annually to provide meaningful historical content for students. And whereas Edison High School, formerly located at 8th Street and Lehigh Avenue, lost 64 of its, uh, of its alumni during the Vietnam War, which is the highest number of casualties from, from the war experienced by any single high school in the United States. That's very important to recognize. Whereas, the sacrifice made by 64 men who gave their lives in service of their country was vital in protecting the freedom and liberty of the nation and in preserving the way of life we enjoy as American citizens. And whereas the new signage shall be posted in front of Edison High School, John C. Ferreira School, Skill Center, located at 151 West, West Luzerne Street, where students can observe, reflect upon, and be inspired by a daily remember, reminder of the, the courage displayed by former students. And whereas along with past and present students, nearly all 64 
uh, Len's family still live in North Philadelphia and will be able to view the memorial honoring the sa sacrifice their family members made for the nation. And whereas, also naming Luzerne Street, Edison 64 Memorial Street, will complement the official state historical marker located at 8th Street and Lehigh Avenue in establishing an enduring landmark that will commemorate the sacrifice made by these 64, this 64 men for generations to come. And therefore, let it be resolved by the City Council of the City of Philadelphia that the memorial and sacrifice of the 64 Edison High School alumni who gave their lives during the Vietnam War is honored and that Luzerne Street between Whitaker Avenue and North 5th Street where Edison High School John C. Ferreira Skills Center is located in the City of Philadelphia shall be henceforth known as Edison 64 Memorial Street. I told you guys that would be a little bit long, but um, I want to thank everyone. Again, the, the, the councilwoman could not be here. She's actually in city council passing laws as we speak, uh, but I want to give a big thank you to Latin American Post. They um, honor and fly our colors with such respect. Uh, anywhere I go, that, uh, that it be the Puerto Rican Parade, the Desfile del Barrio, any other occasion where our flag is being presented, um, they do it with honor and pride, and I want to give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you so very much. And we have a lot, we have, I'd like to extend my gratitude to Councilwoman uh, Maria Quiones for her efforts to push this, help push this through City Council. I also like to recognize 840, in particular our commander, Jose um, M. Melendez. He approached me about the idea and we felt that our students here that attend the new Edison High School should have a, a reminder. If you go down to 8th and Lehigh, you will see the historical marker. However, not all of our students live in that area, but our students should take pride in, in understanding their heritage and the richness of the heritage of so many young men who died um, who also wore the green and gold on their backs. So thank you so very much, Ms. Al uh, Alvarado, Alvarez, I'm sorry. And um, please extend our, our greatest appreciation for this, this award. So, this one, I told you before, we have surprises. So this one here, um, I really want you to take heed, especially our veterans in the audience, because I was approached by this gentleman, and he said he wants to give Edison a gift, a special gift that involves the sacrifice and some of the, the, the men who fought over there, and he wanted Edison to have this, this gift. And I, I said, of course, I'm gonna put you on a program. And without further delay, I'd like to ask for Mr. Peter Jackson, Edison High School, class of 66, also Edison, um, also a Vietnam veteran. Come forward. I took a photograph, and uh, with every uh, picture, there's a uh, like a backstory, and I'm going to read you what it says on the back. To all students, faculty, administrative staff, and principal Ortiz. In October 1987, I took a picture of a group of Vietnam veterans at Penn's Landing. At the time, I didn't realize how important this picture was, but now I know that it is important and as well, very special. So special, in fact, I want to dedicate it to the school. My name is Peter F. Jackson, and I am an alumnus of Edison and a Vietnam veteran and proud that I am. I want to present this picture 
to the school on behalf of myself and my wife, Iola, with whom I share everything. With respect to the FCS. bottom of the picture there's an inscription and it says <laughs> veterans from Edison High School gather <laughs> at the Philadelphia Vietnam Veterans Memorial <laughs> Penn's Landing 1987 On record, at this time, 54 was the number of uh, veterans who uh, were deceased at that time. And uh, the number 54 is in the picture. Uh, some of the veterans in the picture are in the audience. Unica, please stand, please. Served 
with honor. They lost very close friends, family members, and they're here. If it wasn't for their sacrifice, we wouldn't have the country that we have today. So please give them a round of applause. So, we're going to ask them to come up. And we have something from Medicine High School. Because we appreciate the fact that you serve, and this is the 50th commemoration of the war, you will have a plaque in a frame that you can use to the, uh, the patch for your uniform or whatever you like, and you leave it in the frame. And we thank you, we honor you, we respect you, and we thank you so much for coming. So if you would, with that speech, help me. We're about to go into the most sacred part of this ceremony, and we, I truly appreciate all of the veterans that are here. It's an honor for me to do this part of the ceremony, and it's an honor for me to be among so many who have served our country. Before we start, I brought a candle to the stage with me. This is a candle lighting ceremony. This candle will not be lit, but I hold this candle in memory of a veteran that did not die in Vietnam, but died years later because of what many veterans know that happened in Vietnam. He was sprayed with Agent Orange. Senior Master Sergeant John F. Hum Humphrey was my father. He died several years later, but this candle, I could not come to this stage without giving honor to his name, and so I bring this candle and I hold it high for the man that he helped make me be. And I appreciate that. <laughs> candle holders, please rise. Candle holders, take your positions. John E. Addison. James J. Allen. Charles J. Antonelli. William B. Blackman, Jr. Stephen P. Blanchett. Laurel L. Blevins, III. Zachary Brookins, Jr.
Hector W. Bryan. Samuel N. Burton. Robert J. Campbell. Glenn Carter. Richard A. Carter. William Chapman, Jr. Milton G. Claiborne. Louis A. Carborio. Dayton A. Daniels. Wayne T. Dillman. Harold A. Dolman. Antonio Garcia. Charles J. Glenn III. Roscoe Glover, Jr. Irvin J. Hopkins. Rocco R. Isaac. Randolph T. Jefferson. Joe T. Johnson. Joseph Johnson, Jr. John W. Jolie, Jr. Dennis N. Kuzer. Kenny E. Lassiter. Joseph F. Lodice, Jr. Gerald J. McGuire. George R. Martin. Adolfo Martinez. Richard F. McNichols. Joseph Mezikowski. Harry John Miller. William J. Moore. John G. Orsino. Leroy W. Pegler. Kenneth Pettis. Alfred A. Purvis. Lawrence J. Riker, Jr. Samuel Rodriguez. Angelo Santiago.
Harry B. Seeds the third. Darnay Schubert. Neely J. Singletary. Mark Smith, Jr. James T. Swift, Jr. Aaron L. Thomas. Henry B. Thomas. John J. Thomas. Robert Torres. Gerald A. Whalen. Samuel F. Walker, Jr. Nathaniel Washington. Joseph A. Weber. Lewis N. Welsh. General White. James B. White. Michael M. White. Dwayne G. Williams. Bernard R. Wolchecki. Francis A. Zergen. Before we have a moment of silence, let's not forget the MIAs and the POWs. And may we have a moment of silence, please, in the memory of these men. <laughs> 